Hey everybody, it's Friday. I'm Matthew Laria. I want to take a second to welcome you to our Faith for Life broadcast. Let's pray and release faith over today's broadcast and then we're going to get right into the Word. Father, we do thank you today, Lord, again for your Word. And Lord, we're asking you for a revelation of it. We're asking you for grace and help to receive it, to put it into practice, and to see the results of it working in our lives. And we do thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, all this week on the broadcast, we've been doing a series of teachings entitled, Making Room for the Word of God. And we've been finding out how vitally important it is that you and I make the Word of God a priority in our lives and that we make room for God's Word. You know, so many Christians, so many believers rarely spend time in the Word of God. They don't go to church. They don't read their Bible. They don't listen to teaching and preaching. And so often, this is the root to so many problems that people aren't making room for the Word. And so let's go back over to Mark chapter 4 and look at verse 18 again, which is our foundation text for the week. And Jesus said this, And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the Word and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in, choke the Word, and it becomes unfruitful. The word choke there again means to crowd out. And so Jesus is talking about a group of people who the Word couldn't produce in their lives because the Word had no room in their lives because their lives were so full of other things. Now, I want to point out today in that verse where he said the Word becomes unfruitful. Now, friend, what is the Word for? What is it supposed to do in our lives? The Word is for doing and the Word is for producing. I want to say it to you again. The Word is for doing and the Word is for producing. The Word is supposed to produce effect and fruit and results in our lives when we do it. Let's go over to James chapter 1 and let's look at verse 22 there. In James chapter 1, we're just going to look at the first part of that verse. It says, But be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. And so you and I are supposed to be doers of the word. The word of God was given to us for doing for practice, for application. Did you know, notice in that verse that God didn't say, be discussers of my word? Did you notice that God didn't say, be debaters of my word? He didn't even say in that verse to be ponderers of my word. Now, now why do I say that? Because many people approach the word as something to debate theologically. They approach the word as something to discuss theologically, as something maybe even to ponder. Well, friend, God didn't tell us to be discussers. He didn't tell us to be debaters of his word. He didn't tell us to just be ponderers of his word. He told us to be doers of his word. And when you and I are spending time in this Bible, we should be looking for something that we're going to do from this Bible and put into practice in our lives. But many are not. Many, when they do come and spend time in the Word, they're not looking for something to do. They're not looking to be a doer of the Word. You know, in Ezekiel chapter 33, in verse 31 and 32 in the Living Bible, it says this, They come as though they are sincere and sit before you listening, but they have no intention of doing what I tell them. You are very entertaining to them, like someone who sings lovely songs with a beautiful voice or plays well on an instrument. They hear what you say, but don't pay any attention to it. Now, friend, that is not how you and I should approach the Word. Now, many are. Many come to church even when, when they do come to church. They, they listen, but they don't have any attention of doing what they're hearing. And see, friend, the Word is for doing. 
The word is for practice. In Philippians 4, 9, the Apostle Paul wrote, Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do them. The Good News translation says, put into practice what you've learned. And so revelation is for application. Knowledge is for execution and learning is for practice. I want to say it to you again. Revelation is for application. Come on, if you get something from the Word, if God reveals something to you from His Word, it's for application. Knowledge is for execution. If you get some knowledge from the Bible, you're supposed to execute it, put it into practice. And then learning is for practice. If you learn something, you're supposed to practice what you learn. Now, what does this do? Doing the Word is supposed to lead to the Word producing something in our lives. Again, in James chapter 1, in verse 25, it says this, Whoever looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. And so doing was supposed to lead to, the, to blessing or being blessed. Doing the word is supposed to lead to the word producing in your life. And what that verse was showing us is that when the man, the person who does the word, the thing that should show up is we should see that man being blessed in what he does. Come on, doing should lead to producing. God told Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night that you may observe to do all that's written therein. So why? what's the purpose of meditating? He didn't say meditate just for meditating sake. He didn't say meditate on my word so that you can discuss it. He didn't say meditate on my word so you can debate it. No, he said meditate on it so that you can do it and then you'll make your way prosperous and then you'll have good success. Come on, what is he revealing to us? The word is for doing and producing. If you meditate on it and do it, it'll produce prosperity and success in your life. And so time in the word should lead to application, and then production. I want to say it to you again. Time in the Word should lead to application and then to production. It should not just be leading to debate and discussion. Come on, I'm not spending time in the Word so that I can debate somebody I don't agree with. I'm not spending time in the Word so that I can just have an interesting discussion with somebody about what I think the Word says. Sorry, no. There are no verses that reveal that to us. I'm spending time in this word so that I can do it and see it produce in my life. You know, Jesus taught us that the word is seed. Well, all seeds are supposed to produce and the word of God is supposed to produce in your life. And here's the thing, friend. When you start applying the word of God into your life, that's when the Word of God will become a weapon. In Ephesians 6, 17, it says, And take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So the Word is a sword. And that means the Word is a weapon. It's a spiritual weapon that you and I fight with. And when we hear the Word and believe it and decree it, and act upon it, that's when it becomes a weapon in our lives. You remember in Luke chapter 6 when Jesus said, the guy that hears the word and does it, when the storm beats upon his house, the storm doesn't cause the house to fall. The storm doesn't win. Why is that? Because when you hear the word and put it into practice, it becomes a weapon in your life and you can use the weapon of God's word to fight against the storms of this life, that you can use the word to fight against the attacks of the enemy. The word is a weapon and you can use it to fight and to see victory in your life. But it doesn't become a weapon for you because you discuss it or because you debate it or because you ponder it. No, it becomes a weapon in your life when you hear it, 
when you believe it, when you decree it, and when you do it. And so what is the word for in our lives? Why should we make room for the word? What should be the result of us making room for the word in our lives? Well, when we make room for the word in our lives, it should lead to doing and producing. It should lead to application and production. Come on, friend, are you excited about this? I don't know about you, but I want to see the word of God produce results and victory in my life, and I know you do too, praise the Lord. Now, as we're closing today's broadcast, I want to remind you of these three things. Number one, the Word of God was given to us for doing, for practice, for application. Number two, doing the Word is supposed to lead to seeing the Word produce in our lives. And then number three, when the Word of God is applied, it becomes a weapon that we can fight with and experience victory with in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we thank you so much for all the good things that you showed us this week on the broadcast. And Lord, as we go forward, we are asking you for grace and help to make room for the Word in our lives. Lord, help us to make the Word a priority in our lives. Lord, any time where we're not giving the Word the place that we should, and any time that we're making room for other things instead of making room for your Word, we're asking you, Lord, for correction, for light to see it, so that we can make the adjustments that we need to make, and so that we can see the Word produce prosperity and success in our lives. And we do thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Friend, thank you so much for watching all the broadcasts this week. And hey, I'm hooked in faith with you and I'm believing that you are going to make room for the Word of God in your life like you never have before, that you're going to be a doer of it and you're going to see this Word produce levels of prosperity and success in every area of your life like you've never seen it before in the name of of Jesus. Now, hey, you know the deal. Come back Monday for the next edition of our Faith for Life broadcast. We'll see you then. Hey, everybody. Matthew Larry here. Hey, if this broadcast is a blessing to you, and if the Lord is using this broadcast to minister to you, we would love to hear your testimony. You know, we like to share with our partners how their support is helping us to minister the Word of God and take the message of faith to people all over the world and your testimonies will help us do just that. And so if you've been watching the broadcast and if you've been enjoying the broadcast, if the Lord has been ministering to you through the broadcast, we would love to hear your testimony. So please just go to mam.tv and send in a testimony to us of how the Faith for Life broadcast is blessing your life. Friend, it doesn't have to be long. We just want to hear from you. So thanks in advance for your testimonies and we'll see you soon. Thank you.